uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll quickly um, go back and you know do the things uh, which where we were left. Uh, we have already discussed what is WACC and um, you know uh, the way to find WACC as such. We've done that for uh, Google. Now what we'll do is we will be calculating the present value of the uh, WACC. So I mean meanwhile I had by mistake you know removed all my uh, figures so I'll just quickly uh, do that so that uh, you know while we wait for the other participants to join depreciation depreciation amortization stock based compensation interest into one minus t capital expenditure I had to take from cash flows investment in intangibles I'm just finishing off uh, where we left actually I by mistake had deleted all my free cash flow figures so I'm just making sure that they are also with me so cash flows this is changes in working capital so I assume that this is what the answers were Okay, so we have the free cash flow to the firm. Uh, we also have the WACC. Now, what we essentially have to do now is find the present value of all the future cash flows and find the present value of the terminal value. Okay, so that is what we are going to do now. Here, one uh, assumption that we will have to take is with respect to the terminal growth rate. Now, uh, remember what exactly is terminal growth rate when we were talking about you know dividend discount model we said that uh, that uh, example the company will grow at the rate or the dividends will grow at the rate of 8% forever you know infinite and it was called as going concern okay so this is what our assumption was in case of a uh, dividend discount model now when it comes to US companies what do you think would be the appropriate terminal growth rate? Can this be equal to 1%, 2%, 8%, 10%, 15%? Now, are we talking about terminal growth rate of the company or are we talking about terminal growth rate of the country? You know, what exactly are the implications? That's what, you know, I want you to understand and appreciate. Sorry, uh, just to give you a, a perspective, you know, terminal growth rate, uh, uh, what we'll do is uh, I'll open another Excel sheet our discussion for those who have just joined our discussion here is terminal growth rate discussion uh, which will be uh, which which draws parallel from the dividend discount model in the dividend discount model we say we said that you know the terminal growth rate was 8% forever so in case of Google the question is how much will this be okay now Say for example, you know, if we take India as an example, what is the GDP growth rate in India? The GDP growth rate in India is almost around eight, eight and a half percent. We can fairly take this as eight percent, okay, as of now. Let us take India's GDP growth rate as eight percent and uh, let us assume that the company that we are looking at, okay, it's a company ABC. The growth rate of this company is let's say you know 15% forever okay I'm talking about terminal growth rate what we understand by terminal growth rate is that you know we have divided our free cash flows into two parts one is from 2011 12 13 14 and 15 and the second one was beyond 2015 so our question here is what happens at what great growth rate this company should grow beyond 2015 so will that grow at 8% will that grow at 15% will that be 1 or 2% you know that is what uh, the uh, overall uh, discussion topic is okay so having said that let us assume that you know this is what the situation is now what is the absolute value of India's GDP what is the absolute value of India's GDP in dollars or otherwise uh, you know we can immediately do Google if you don't uh, remember what is India's GDP 
Okay, there are few answers as such. I mean, uh, Ankit says it is equal to 1.3 trillion dollars. Okay, just to uh, show you what exactly will that be? Absolute in dollars. You know, it is it is very closer to 1.3 trillion, uh, but exactly that number would be. Okay, let's assume that okay, this number is actually 1.3 trillion dollars. So 1.3 trillion dollars. Uh, we are taking this figure from uh, Ankit, uh, and uh, he said Vikas, in fact, also says the same thing. So 1.3 trillion dollars. So how many zeros are there in a trillion? First and foremost, one billion is equal to 10 to the power nine. One million is equal to 10 to the power six. One trillion is equal to 10 to the power of 12. Okay, so this is what the absolute value of our GDP is. India's GDP. Okay, now this is current situation let us assume that this company is very very small as compared to the GDP of the country okay this we, we are actually trying to develop a situation where we are assuming that uh, this company ABC grows at 15 percent forever and uh, the starting point or the sales or the turnover of this company is Three, four, five, six, one million. Okay, so if if I compare the percentages, this is very close to, you know, percentage is very close to zero. So it is almost minuscule. Okay, so let us now assume. Now remember that in DCF, when we talk about, we are talking about assumptions like infinite growth rate, infinite uh, period. Okay, so infinite period, if we, if we see, you know, we should understand how this will look like after 50 years, you know, maybe 100 years, and maybe after 500 years. You know, this is what we need to understand and do, that, you know, how this country's GDP will look at, look like at the end of 50 years, at the end of 100 years, at the end of 500 years, and so on and so forth. So what will that number be? If I talk about at the end of 50 years, the GDP of the country, if it grows at the rate of 8% for the next 50 years, this will be the answer. Okay? Answer will be, I am increasing my GDP, okay, at the rate of 8% for the next 50 years. Okay? So likewise, my formula for my company ABC will be, to grow the turnover of the company with the rate which is 15%. It is not 8%. We are assuming that it is higher than the growth rate or the GDP of the country. Okay. So to the power of 50. So what happens, you know, uh, there is some figure which is available. Let us look at the percentage. How much is the percentage now? It's still 0%. Okay. So it is still 0% after 50 years also this company will be minuscule as compared to the country's GDP. Okay. Now let us take this ahead and say that, you know, maybe what happens after 100 years. Let us visualize that. So it becomes 2.85 to the power of uh, 10 to the power of 5. Here in this case, to the power of 100. Okay. Now just look at the percentage size okay here if I just elaborate this a bit this started with 0.000 percent came to 0.002 now it is 0.041 so now what we are looking at in terms of trend is that you know uh, this company is growing in size with respect to the overall country so here this percentage essentially is company ABC divided by India GDP. Okay. So this is what this percentages are all about. Now let us look at how this will look like after 500 years. Because why we are doing this exercise is because in this assumption of DCF, we assume that this company will grow at the rate of 15% forever. So whether this 15% is justified or not, we need to look at it from the scenario analysis perspective. What it will look like after 50 years, 500 years, 1000 years, so on and so forth. 
and we need to find out if any there are inconsistencies between our assumptions. So this is what will happen at the end of 500 years. This will be 6.69 multiplied by 10 to the power of 28. That is what the GDP will be. But what about uh, the company ABC? Let us look at this number. I'm just putting as 500 and now look at what the answer is. Now what is the answer? Now if you look at this answer, you will find that this 